I'm Atu Bojoj and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now this is a new week and we are continuing what we began to talk about from the beginning of the month. And we're talking about the book that has been opened. Praise God. Now why are we talking about the book that has been opened? If you remember, I began to share with you how the word of the Lord came to me concerning this. And that's when I was studying Revelation chapter number five praise god so the lord began to expound his word to me thank you lord jesus the lord began to expound his word to me concerning this and how it affects you and i believe what we have been sharing so far has really really been a blessing to you and i know this week is going to be a marvelous week praise god before we go into today's broadcast can we make request for our daily bread are you ready expect a miracle as we do this join me right now say father i receive now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name a Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, now, we've been talking about the book that have been opened and taking it from Jesus who picked that book that was in the right hand of the Father in Revelation chapter 5. He was the only one that was qualified to open the book. And it says he prevailed. It says the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. And I told you that that book was so special that no one was able to look into it. Now, this is the same thing that Paul was talking about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. When he began to say, as it is written, I have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for those that love him you see he said eyes have not seen it no ear has heard it it has not entered into the heart of any man meaning no one has even perceived the things that god has in store for those that love him now we find out in revelation chapter 5 that there was a book that no one, it was a sealed book. No one was qualified to open the book. No one was qualified to even look into it. No one was qualified to open the seal. Only Jesus. Now follow me because, you know, sometimes you, you, you want to wonder the kind of life that you live. Many of us live the general life, but there is something beyond the general life. And that's what I'm calling you onto. I'm calling you into a special life that was tailor made for you. Now, the problem with a lot of believers is this. They don't have faith in themselves enough to step in to what God has in store for them. Now imagine if what God has in, have in store for you, no eye have seen it, no ear has heard it, it has not entered into the heart of any man. Now imagine that. It means no one can guide you into it. Can't you see? No one can tell you this is it. If someone can tell you this is what God has in store for you, it simply means the person has seen it. So that has violated what God has said. Now, but God says, now let me, let me, let me take you there. You know, First Corinthians, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared 
for those who love him. Now, I want you to follow this now. It says, those who love him. Who are those who love him? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. Now, when you, when you, you know how a lot of times it's the, the, the meaning of every word is in its definition. If you do not define the words in a statement, you don't get the whole meaning. You won't understand the context in which he's speaking. Now he says, God has prepared for those who love him. Who are those who love him? They are those who keep his word. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my words. Now, how do you keep his words? It means your life is controlled by what he has told you. Now, sometimes people uh, take these statements to mean, you know, I, I, I can't do anything. So they, they really don't do anything. Now, the reason we, we, we say, oh, I can't do anything except what the Lord tells me to do is because I know I have a relationship with the Lord and he will tell me what to do. So when you don't have a relationship with the Lord, I say, I can't do anything until God tells me what to do. How would you know when he tells you what to do if you don't have a relationship with him? So we say these things because of our depth of fellowship with him. So because there is a fellowship that exists between you and him, you will wait for him. Then you will understand the scripture where it says, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those that wait upon the Lord, how do they wait upon the Lord? They, are, they wait because they are keepers of the word. They are keepers of his word. Now, keepers of the word, keepers of his word, simply means that they are keepers of, of the things he has said to them. Now, what does it mean to keep? It's not, oh, he told me something. I'm hiding it inside my heart. No. Remember, David says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. What does it mean to hide the word in his heart? How does he control? How does his word control you not to sin against him? Because you receive his word. So you are mindful of your work. You are mindful of your thoughts that it doesn't go against what he has told you. Now, because you know that when you go against what he has told you, you begin to sin against him. You see that now? Now, the more you fellowship with the Lord, the more he begins to tell you things. He begins to give you tailor-made instructions. Now, that's not a general instruction. So, you get to that point where sin to you, you're not talking about fornication. You're not talking about, um, I told a lie. You're not talking about, um, I, 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 I cheated someone. That's not what you talk about when you talk. Oh, I've, I've, I've seen, I need to repent. See, now you get to that point where you begin to say, ha, huh, I said something I was not supposed to say. And then when you say, what did you say? And then by the time you say it, they're like, so what's wrong with that? See, but then you know that the word of the Lord has come to you concerning that thing. See, now some of us, the Lord have told, for example, you know, I think last week I was telling you how the Lord instructed me when, how to pray when I'm praying, when I'm going on a trip or when someone is going on a trip. Now you start out the journey and then you suddenly remember, I said, dear Lord, Please forgive me. I'm sorry. But what are you repenting about? I did something wrong. What did you do? I was supposed to pray in a certain way. But I have not done it. Or I didn't do it. So I'm going to do it now. Right? How, how is that a sin? You see? So now, he, because you are a keeper of his word. Now, there are some, some of us, God will say, don't ever borrow. Now, even though that is written in his word, his mindset is that you don't borrow. See, he says, you shall lend to many, you shall not borrow. Now, when you see a statement like that, it's a statement in prophecy. You shall not borrow. You shall not borrow. So when you live your life 
He's not restricting you. I want you to understand the speech of the Lord. He is not restricting you from borrowing. He is telling you what will happen. You know, so now when I walk with him, he has promised me that I will not borrow. So what does that mean? It means I will walk with him and then I will look back and realize that I have not borrowed and I've had no reason to borrow. You see that now? Now, it's not, hey, ah, I mean, things are tight, things are hard. Oh, ah, ah, I want to borrow, but ha, ah, hey, if I borrow now, nah, God says I should not borrow. If I borrow now, nah, now, nah, you see, the word of God that you are keeping in your heart, when you begin to look at actions you are meant to take, decisions you are supposed to make, you see like, I need this thing. And right now, the only way I can get it is by borrowing. But then he has said to me that I shall not borrow. That word was not to put a yoke on you. That word was to put an expectation in your heart and trust in him. So he has said, I shall not borrow. Okay. So I'm not supposed to borrow. So I will not borrow. What does that mean? So he, he is going to supply before the deadline. He's going to supply that thing. So I begin to look forward to that. Why? Because I know I am not supposed to borrow. I know I should not borrow. He said, I shall not borrow. And I believe him. Are you getting it now? Now, if you get to that point where you are now tight and then you say, you know what, man, I, I can't help myself. I'm going to borrow. And then you borrow. Then your heart smites you. Yeah, God, what have I done? Someone else is like, what's wrong? What's the matter? I've sinned against the Lord. You have sinned against you. What did you do? I borrowed. Ah, but you borrowed because you didn't have now. Would you borrow normally? He said, no, you don't understand. See, why? Because the word of the Lord has come to you as a person. Are you following me? The word of the Lord has come to you as a person. Now, in your relationship with the Lord, you will be hearing personal instructions like that. If this is not happening in your life, then you've got to check your relationship with him. And this relation, this, this instruction, they come part time. The more you fellowship with him, your life becomes a life full of instructions. Now, those instructions become the, the, uh, the, fence, the hedge around your life. Now those are the, the, when you now read the scripture, he that breaks the edge, the serpent will bite. You are looking at something more deeper than what other people are looking at. See that now? The Lord can instruct you, look, every day before you step out, do this. It's an instruction. And you must keep that commandment. You must keep that word. Now that's how these things work. So now he says, those who love him, they are those who are mindful of his word. And because you are mindful of his word, you begin to look to him. This, this is where we're going. You begin to look to him with great expectation for everything about your life. You want to get married, you're looking to him because you know you cannot do that by yourself. Jesus actually said, for without me, you can do nothing. And he meant it. If you are in relationship with him, you can't do anything without him. So now you are mindful of his thoughts. You are mindful of his word. You are mindful of what he will say to you. Until you hear him, you don't make any choice. Someone is telling, so what are you going to say? He said, sorry, 
Now, can you give me some time? Can you give me till tomorrow? Why is saying, can you give me till tomorrow? Not because you want to go and think. Because you are waiting for his word. You are waiting for him to tell you, go or don't go. You are waiting for it. And, and, and when you're alone, you're like, Lord, you've not said anything about this. What do you? I, I need to give them an answer. If you don't want me to go with it, I will not go with it. If you want me to go with it, Lord, I will gladly do. I just want to be led by you. Now, when you begin to live your life like this, you are demonstrating that you are the one who loves him. See, of course, he loves you first. He loved us first by giving us his word. So that instruction is a demonstration of his love for you. That instruction secludes you unto himself. Now, when you begin to be, when you begin to get comfortable in his environment, guess what? He begins to open up to you what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. You begin to have your own unique kind of testimonies that just puts you on a different scale, that puts you on a different level. You begin to get testimonies that you don't compare it with anyone. Because now you are on your own lane. Now this is what he meant, or this is what he's been talking to me about by the opening of the book. That thing about your life that no eye have seen, no ear, it has not entered into the heart of any man. That is what the Lord is talking about. And guess what? He wants to take you by the hand and start leading you right into it, step by step, day by day, bringing forth his truths. You've got to believe this. The comparison with your life has no one. There is no one you can compare your life with. There is no one you can compare your life with at all. He is the one that is taking you into the place that he has ordained for you. No one can prophesy this to you. No one can explain this to you. But you've got to believe him. Why? You're a keeper of his word. And if you are not a keeper of his word, why don't you get in? I told you that's the only way you demonstrate your love to him. You keep his word. And I'll tell you this you discover that there is a, your life, this is how your life is transformed. Because the more you see, the more you look, the more you see. And the more you see, the more you are changed. Because you'll be transformed into the same image that you are looking at. So if your eyes are focused on Jesus, you'll be transformed into the image of Jesus. So what's going to be happening to you? Character change. Character change. The basis for which you make decisions or the ingredient by which you make decisions begin to change. And of course, once the, you begin to change the ingredients, you begin to change the taste. You see that now? If you want to change the taste of a soup, change the ingredient used to, make, to prepare it. So the same thing, if you want the taste of your life to change, change the ingredient by which you make decisions. Because your decisions reveals your character. So if you submit yourself to him and you begin to confess, because that's where it starts. I love you, Lord. I do. I do. You remember he told Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? He said, yes, I love you. He says, feed my sheep. Do you love me more than this? Yes, I do. He says, feed my love. Because he had commanded him already. He had commanded him all. So what Jesus was telling Peter right there, he says, keep my word. If you love me, keep my word. Praise God. My time is up. I've got a lot to share with you this week. So open up your heart to receive all of it. Praise God. Father, I pray. Everyone listening to me right now. Your spirit is taking them into that place that you have ordained specifically for them. And Lord, as they begin to be conscious of their love for you in keeping your word, 
you begin to open their eyes to see what no one has ever seen. You begin to take them into paths that is tailor-made for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be a sign in their life that there's something deeper today concerning them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Expect something good today. I love you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.